Okay, this is a second video looking at applications of differential equations, specifically differential equations that end up, um, that start as a direct variation equation and end up with an exponential equation. If you didn't watch the first video, stop this one, go back and watch that one, because I'm going to pick up with sort of delving into how am I going to use this. Um, but I will, I will take a quick moment and walk you through where does this come from. Um, and I want you to follow the wording here. So if you haven't read the question, pause it, read, and we'll pick up in a minute. Okay, you read the question, and you might have noticed that they didn't give you an equation to work with. Very different than what you saw last year in Algebra 2 or Pre-Calculus, where they would say directly use an exponential model. So here's what you need to pick up on. The expectation is that you can read this and read this part right here. So the population is growing at a rate proportional to the population at any point in time. Means my rate of change of po I'm going to use A for my population amount. I just like to use that A as my general amount, whatever I'm talking about. The rate, that's what I've got so far, is proportional to, directly proportional to means K times the population. Okay? That should look very familiar from what we've already worked through. If you want to pause and work through that and solve the differential equation, go into calculus mode, please do. Um, if you are already convinced that you know what the answer is going to be, there is no surprise here. It's going to be the exact same thing that we did twice. You're going to end up with that exponential model. Okay, so I'm not going to make you do it every time, but you need to understand where that comes from, and you need to either do one of two things. Some of us are memorizers, and if you're a memorizer, then you can memorize it every time you see this. You're going to end up with this general equation, um, solution to a differential equation, or you can memorize or work through. I personally would say I would write this equation because I can get that from the words. I don't have to memorize anything, and I can solve the differential equation. So two ways to get there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take a minute and sort out Essentially, we're going to be looking for a particular solution here. We're going to be solving for C. We also have K as an unknown. So I'm going to sort out my uh, information I'm given. I like to kind of set it up as with my two variables. I've got time as my X variable, and A is what I'm using for my population amount. So I'm going to look at everything I have here. Um, on May 1st, they're defining as time zero because they say how many days after May 1st down here. So at zero, times zero, I have 10 in my population. So that's my initial amount. Uh, that's one coordinate point, if you will. Grows to 50 in 30 days. So in 30 days, I have 50 of these hornets. Fabulous. And then the question is asking how many days after May 1st will the population reach 100? So essentially, my, my task is to solve for T. Um, normally, that's a simple simple task, you put in your y value, and you're looking for an x value. So it is going to come down to that, just it's going to take us a little while to get there because we have two unknowns right now. Besides a and t, we have this unknown constant c and this unknown constant k. So I'm going to use my given information to try to solve for that. I've got two pieces of given information, if worse comes to worse. Um, I will write two equations and solve for two variables because algebra allows me to do that. Now I'm also noticing that I have a zero in my one coordinate here. So I'm going to start with this because sometimes when I have a zero, things drop out and things just work out nicely. So I'm going to start with between my two. I'm going to start with this one. If I need to write a second equation, I'll plug in my other point and then I can do the algebra from there. So I'm going to put in the 10 for the amount equals CE to the K times 30. Let's try to get, or times zero, sorry. And then I'm going to just go into algebra mode. So I've got 10 equals C e to the 0. 0 times anything is going to be 0. And then hopefully you're recognizing e to the 0 power is anything to the 0 power is just 1. So my C comes out to be just 10. So that means I can rewrite this guy again. And now I've got A equals 10 times e to the kt. So getting there, now I just have one unknown constant, k. So let's go back over here, and let's take the second piece of information, and let's plug it in. And I'm going to reduce it to just one unknown k once I put my a and t in. So 50 is equal to 10e to the k times 30. 
and then I'm going to go back into algebra mode. Uh, and this is going to be quite a review. We haven't worked a lot with exponential equations. This is something you've done in your past, but it's been a while. So uh, follow with me. So I've got dividing by 10 to isolate my exponential part. 5 equals e to the 30k would probably look better than k times 30. Same thing, but just more what we're used to. So now I'm going to try to solve for a... Uh, variable in my exponent, which means I need to get it out of the exponent. The only way I can do that is to convert it to a log equation, or take the natural log of both sides. Remember that brings my power out front, cool property of logs. So I'm going to end up with natural log of 5 equals 30k times the natural log of e. Natural log of e is 1, so that goes away, and I end up with natural log of 5 equals 30k divided by 30. And we've got k equals natural log of 5 over 30. I'd like us to get in the habit of just using that value, the exact value, for the sake of discussion. If you want a number with that, 0.0536 is what I'm getting, but I'd say we really should just keep this entire value and use that. So, we're almost done. Remember the question. Question is solve for time when your value is 100. Once you get an equation with two variables, your x and your y, or your t and your a, all you got to do is plug in one, you can solve for the other one. We're there. So, let's make a little more room here, and I'm going to rewrite one more time. This time I have the actual equation I was looking for. My amount of population at any point in time is 10 times e to the k is natural log of 5 over 30 times time. Okay, there's my final equation, and we're going to come over here and grab this information and plug it in. And this time, I'm going to be able to look for t because I've got everything else. So putting in 100 for my amount of population. So I've got a 100 right here. T is going to be my unknown. Equals 10e to the natural log of 5 over 30. I know it looks scary. Just go with it. Um, and we get a little more algebra practice here. So divide by 10 on both sides, I get 10 equals e to the natural log of 5 over 30 times time, and I need to solve for a variable in my exponent, so I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. This should look exactly like what we did on the left-hand side. Um, by the end of today, you're going to be good at solving log equations if you weren't before. Power comes out front, and I'm going to get natural log of 10 equals natural log of 5 over 30 times time, there's my power out front, times natural log of e, natural log of e is just 1. So that is going to go away. I'm solving for time. So your version of divide by natural log of 5 over 30, or some of you are probably saying that looks gross. That's a complex fraction. I agree. Gross. How could we make it better? Um, we could multiply by the reciprocal. So if you want to look at this as a fraction here, multiply by 30 over natural log of 5. So it might be simpler to write it this way, although you could just use your calculator at this point. 30 times natural log of 10 over natural log of 5 is going to be my time. Okay, type that in your calculator just to make sure we can do the calculator work. And I'm getting time equals 42.920. And it says how many days, so I think we're safe to assume, but the, the question would probably read, if this were the AP test, this would read as to the nearest day or be a multiple choice question, and then you would assume that you would round because you'd be matching the answer choices. So 43 days, roughly. Okay, if you want to do a quick double check, of course you could go up to here, type a 43 in for T, and you should get about 100 for your amount. Hopefully that helped. Um, feel free to flip it to the back side, but the next one is going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, I referenced what's going to happen at the beginning of this question. Uh, you might have picked up on it. You might not have. Um, the What's going to happen here is 
And the next one, just to give you a heads up if you want to try it on your own, is you're not going to end up with being able to, whoops, being able to solve for C right away. So you're going to end up with basically when you plug in two equations, two unknowns. So you are going to end up with a system of equations. Um, another video coming on that.